Hello and welcome to another episode of What the Fuck? Moments in Manga and Anime. Talking about my favorite Animal Boy BLs <laughs> seems to have become my tradition during Pride. So let's talk about the series. My mic is a feline gentleman. Why did I say it? But hey, this isn't just Animal Boys. There's also some <laughs> mega shit and some trigger warnings in there. So uh, if any of this is not your flavor of spice or if you're under 18, please scroll away. So before we even jump into who anybody is, let's talk about some lore because this series gives a little bit of backstory to its megaverse. So we have humans, and then we have the feline beast folk, the Nyartesians. After a millennium of the two <laughs> canoodling, we eventually end up with alpha and omega human hybrids. Even though alphas and omegas are extremely rare, omegas are treated like bottom class citizens because of the way their pheromones can be very tempting. So many live a life of captivity and servitude of all kinds. Thus is the life of our main omega boy, Tushiru. He has known nothing but horrors his entire life. However, when his master passes on and the alpha son takes over, that son just isn't in Toshiro. So to his surprise, Toshiro is sent to be a servant to his new master's new tenant, a Nartesian diplomat named Alex. And despite his feline resting bitch face, he is in fact a gentleman. Well, being that Alex is the son of the Nartesian ambassador, Toshiro was actually sent there to uh, create some scandal. But Alex has been so kind to him that he can't do it, and our feline gentleman completely forgives him, for it has taken the Nyartesian people centuries for them to get the respect that they have in society. And uh, you know, it's not great, but it's a hell of a lot more than the Omegas have. The two start to bond, and as Toshiro eventually goes into several heat cycles in front of Alex, for once in his life, he knows safety and security. Alex takes care of him like he's a sick brother. Of course, yeah, sparks are, <laughs> sparks are flying. But of course, Alex's friend Rodney bursts through the door with some bad news. According to a letter from Alex's father, there have been several incidences in the UK between Nartesian folk and Omega. Apparently, Omega pheromones make the beast folk um go beast mode, full on alpha beast mode. And Alex has realized lately that um he's kind of been tempted a lot. Could this be? what's happening to him. Suddenly, his extremely well-educated brain that's fluent in nine languages could suddenly turn to poop and he could go bonanzas. So Alex and Toshiro are realizing, uh, maybe they should not live together. So Alex ends up rehoming Toshiro. <laughs> like he's a dog and he just found out he's allergic to it. So they go to this lady's house for a party and, uh, you know, it could have gone really nice. <laughs> they could have really, really gone along well, except, um, there's a lot of racist people here. Yeah, and you know, Toshiro, he has Alex's back, but uh, the next day when he's trying to scurry off to his new home without anybody knowing, um, he's realizing all of these rich people in town have each other's back, and Alex's old master before Alex points them in his direction. They're ready to give Toshiro the consequences, but luckily, Alex kind of knew something was up, and uh, unfortunately, that also kind of makes him go beast mode. He ends up going ham hands on pretty much everyone. Thankfully, the powers of love that made him go beast mode in the first place bring him back. And these two go into volume two as mites. Alex's ambassador daddy Gilbert then summons them to the UK. He's so appalled by how this country treats Omega that he's like, yeah, this place can kiss all of my furry cheeks. And uh, daddy Gilbert is still kind of <laughs> reeling from sticking his whiskers in the fire trying to cover up this whole incident. And while these two lovebirds are keeping their relationship a secret, Alex's daddy, uh, he already knows. I mean, he has to. <laughs> He's seen the other incidences. He knows what happened there. And, uh, you know, it also happened with his son. There's no way he's blind to it. But he has to act like he is. Because as the ambassador, there are eyes and ears everywhere. You never know who's dropping those eaves. So Gilbert's like, oh yes, <laughs> you know, the easiest way to cover up this whole whole thing and just sweep it under the rug would be if you just shut the fuck up and march down the aisle with a nice girl. After all, how would your little Omega mate that I know nothing about <laughs> think if you knew about the skeletons in your closet, Alex, my boy? Well, Alex is being wingmanned <laughs> against his will. Ishiro has been banished to the servants' quarters, and while he does meet a very nice servant man, his days are very lonely without Alex. However, Toshiro does get along well with Alex's mother. She's so smart and fancy. And well, Toshiro's realizing that he is as far from what high society is going to expect a diplomat's partner to be. Alex deserves all happiness in the world, and he deserves a partner that everybody is going to respect. And that's not ever going to be him. So 
so he's thinking that, you know, the best thing that he can do for Alex and Alex's happiness is to just make his way to the home for wayward omegas. And yeah, this, this series really loves the emotional whiplash. Just when you think the relationship's going ahead just fine, someone slams on the brakes. And you know what? I'm not even going to talk about volume three. I don't know if the series is over at three or what. I, I couldn't find any other info, but you know what? Either way, it's a good place to stop. I don't want to ruin the whole <laughs> boss battle and, the, you know, the end cutscene, but uh, if you're paying attention, you can see that final boss coming a mile down the road. There's a lot of dark subject matter here, but it's cute overall. I'm not just saying that because there's a lot of kitties wearing pants, but it might be part of it.